Transmitting to you from Old Heart Radio. gentlemen that's right this is another episode of coffee and contemplation i'm your host old heart or or you can call me jared if you want that's fine you know use your name if you have one if you don't have one that's fine i was just watching uh the most recent john oliver and it was he was talking about chinese the chinese one child policy And there are literally thousands of people in China, thousands of females in China who just don't have names because they were never like adopted by the actual system. It's fucking crazy. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. Uh, But, you know, it's just a thought. I'm here trying to ripen up my coconut as best I can. I hope you're here too. What's that? I'm so scared right now. Children of the night. Oh. What music they make. Okay. I think I know what we're talking about today. I don't know if you know what we're talking about today yet, but I think I got it. I am Dracula. That's right, you dirty motherfuckers. We're talking about <laughs> Dracula today. Dracula is a staple in any, uh, well, you know, any holiday celebrating household uh, dracula is a halloween staple um also a literary staple uh literate little in terms of uh you know high class high brow literature <laughs> maybe i'm wrong on that one but uh <laughs> either way so okay um dracula i want to talk most specifically about the dracula movie uh, mainly because it's it's like I said, it's a staple, man. Bella Lugosi's Dracula is the just the the icon that won't ever die. Like it will forever live on. As long as humans are living and around, people are going to have the 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 image of Bella Lugosi's Dracula on their brains or in their minds or haunting them while they sleep. Uh, <laughs> either way, so uh, Dracula is a is a pre-code 1931 horror film. If you don't know what the pre-code is, that's referring to uh, the the time between 1929 when adopt when the adoption of sound was was happening in motion pictures. Uh, so it's a time between 1929 and uh, like the mid 1930s, like 1934, um, when there was a pretty strict enforcement crackdown on the motion picture production code. So this movie came out pre-code, so not as strict of a production crackdown, uh, you know, in terms of what they can and cannot do. So this uh, was Dracula was originally released on February 12th, 1931 in the New York and then throughout the States on February 14th, 1931, which is a fucking brilliant date for Dracula to be re- released. This was a pretty big risk uh, when it came to motion pictures and where they were at the time like people weren't really like clawing at being scared they weren't really like they didn't want monster movies necessarily uh so this was just like it was just it was a gamble in a lot of ways um we all kind of know the plot to dracula you know uh renfield shows up at uh dracula's castle dracula and at his castle, uh, Dracula hypnotizes his motherfucking ass, and he's like, "Hey, man, you're gonna help me get to London, and I'm gonna go, go, go try and f- win a new bride, drink some blood." He's basically going on a fucking vacation to London. Like that's <laughs> that's like the plot of Dracula. Dracula's like, "I'm tired of my digs. I want to go on a trip. Got to get somebody to make, make it happen," and so he does. Um, 
Van Helsing is a very compelling character, possibly more compelling than Hugh Jackman's version of Van Helsing. Uh, <laughs> which, shout outs to Hugh Jackman, man. That dude's running a coffee company now, which is actually kind of fucking cool. And also, you know, I just rewatched Old Man Logan the other day. Oh my god. Brilliant movie. Brilliant send off to a brilliant character, Mwah, Rich Marinara. But we're not talking about Wolverine, we're talking about motherfucking Dracula. Um, so, like I said, Dracula wants to take a trip to London. Uh, Van Helsing is there, and he's just like, you know, I'm pretty sure this motherfucker's a vampire, and nobody's like buying it. But <laughs> he keeps trying to do he keeps trying to warn people though. That's the nice thing about him. He's just like, fuck it, dude. I'm just gonna like keep saying shit. Uh, then there's like the one scene where he doesn't see the reflection, Dracula's reflection in his mirror, and then like the other motherfucker doesn't, and so they're like, oh my god, he is a vampire. <laughs> okay, so, um, eventually, Dracula takes Mina, who he, it's his like new wannabe bride, back to his castle, and you know, they rescue her, and kill Dracula, and all this shit. So, you, you know how that goes. The cast, though, man, okay, so, so, Mina Seward was played by Helen Chandler. John Harkin was played by Dave Myers. Renfield, which was, Renfield was, was brilliant. Shit, shout outs, shout outs to uh, Yellow Tea, shout outs to Evil L, shout outs to my homie Uncaged, it was just her birthday. Happy birthday, homie. Uh, shout outs to Mooner Sick, shout outs to Castle Roll, my fellow Old Heart Radio host. Shout outs to my younger brother, Bugatron, shout outs to Harrison Hannon, shout outs to Monk Flower Band, shout outs to anybody else that's listening, shout outs to the Are You Afraid podcast, man. Check that motherfucker out. Check those that group of people out, man. They run this uh, this dope podcast in town called Are You Afraid of Are You Afraid of the Dark? If you're like me and you're a fucking 90s baby, 90, you're raised in the 90s, you'll love their podcast. Check that shit. Um, but back to the back to the Dracula. Dracula. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bella Lugosi obviously pay, plays Count Dracula. But um, but but who's Van Helsing? That's why I didn't know. Van Helsing was played by Edward Van Sloan. Well, at least he had Van in the name. That's probably why he got hired. They probably hired him because he's like, wait, you already have Van in your name. <sighs> um, it's a solid cast though, man. Like, uh, it's it. They all they all really work well together. I'd say. Um, there's like a few different things like. So the 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 writers of this movie really heavily uh, took from Nosferatu because at the time Nosferatu, uh, which had come out and been uh, been made in 1922 by F. W. Murnau, 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 I don't know, um, didn't actually it wasn't actually like legally like legit because Bram Stoker's uh, wife, I believe, Bram Stoker's widow sued for plagiarism, and so it was, it was ruled as, like, basically, like, I mean, it was made, it was out there, but you couldn't legally call it Dracula, or anything, you couldn't legally, uh, tie it in with Bram Stoker's, uh, work. This movie, you could, um, so Dracula was already, like, a hip play when they started trying to adopt it. But like I said, uh, the the screenwriters really studied um, not just the play, but the but but Nosferatu, the the literal unauthorized version of Dracula, which is considered one of the greatest representations of Dracula on screen still. Um, and you can see a lot of this in terms of like just kind of like how some of the shadows are are shot there's this one scene that they that i read that was it, it's the sh it's the scene where renfield like dracula's like like renfield pricks his finger and he's bleeding and dracula's like oh my god i want some of that motherfucking blood and he's like over there like like staring at it like ah, his, his, his cape's like covering his face and he's just like i want that motherfucking blood and uh he gets kind of creepy and close and he's like creeping out with his hands out like i'm about to eat this motherfucker and then Renfield's uh, like crucifix or whatever drops down right in front of his hand, and Dracula's like, <laughs> and he like you know reverts, and he like, like draws back. Um, that scene is basically, basically almost like a shot-for-shot -shot scene from Nosferatu. 
it's it's like the, like especially the crucifix dropping in front of the hand like that it, like and like that and Dracula with his creepy uh, you know fingers out that was like that's one of the like the things about Dra- about Bella Lugosi's Dracula is he 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 moves very similarly to Nosferatu uh, so like like just like in that like kind of gl- he glides man like you don't know how he's fucking walking it doesn't look like his legs are moving ever it just looks like he's gliding around every room he's in and he's always got his like when he's getting really creepy and about to bite somebody he's got his like fingers out uh one of the brilliant things about this is like it plays into the you know the lore of like vampires being able to turn into not just wolves but bats as well uh which is kind of something you know brushed under a lot of a lot of modern uh takes on vampires don't have them even turning into bats let alone wolves so it's like it's interesting uh because dracula does both he you know shoots for shoots for both um overall though i mean like i i also have the wolf man i want to watch rewatch because i haven't seen some of these classics in a long time but i just i thoroughly enjoyed this it, de- it definitely like oh man it, it's just it's good it's creepy it's 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 fun but also like i could see why in 1931 some people freaked out about this shit like they i mean and maybe this was just fluff rumors but like they had people like passing out in the theater you know when dracula first started showing there was like all sorts of shit uh you just don't you don't get that anymore People want people want a good scary movie, so they go into them like hoping to shit their pants, and like, <laughs> and so now it's like the bar's set so high. Back in the day, like the bar was so low for scary things uh, that you know, like you could like, literally have a dude walk through a bunch of cobwebs, and some lady would fucking like scream in the front row. Ah! <laughs> Or I would. I'm, I hate spiders. I gotta be honest. It's not just ladies. It's men too. I fucking hate spiders. I'm creeped out by spiders. Creeping, crawling. Oh, man. Ugh. Either way, we're not talking about that. <laughs> we're still talking about Dracula. Dracula. <laughs> um, so, when the film premiered, it premiered in New York, like I said, on February 12th, a couple days ahead of the, uh, inter- the, the nationwide release premiered at the Roxy Theater. And like I said, people were like fainting in there, in the theater. Uh, the uh, There was like, I don't know. There was some backlash for it. But like, but there had already been a couple of other monster movies at the time, like semi-scary monster movies at the time, I guess. Not really like monster monsters, but either way, this was the most well-received and... Uh, it made it made plenty of money so it kind of just fueled the idea of monster movies in hollywood bella lugosi only took like 3500 bucks for his role and they didn't even want bella lugosi originally in the role it's fucking insane but now you can't think of him you can't think of anybody else as dracula at, at least not in my mind Maybe Leslie Nielsen from Dracula Dead and Loving It. Shout outs to my buddy uh, from childhood, Luke. Uh, <laughs> definitely remember that fucking movie. Either way, this has been another episode of Coffee and Contemplation. Uh, go out there, use your brain for good. Every day is a good day to ripen up that coconut. Follow us online at Old Heart Radio on Instagram, uh, Old Heart in Space on Twitter. Tell all your friends about the podcast. Tell your mom about the podcast. Tell your fucking grandma. I don't care. Either way, keep your stick on the ice.